Well, it's a very exciting day here at the Lexus Virtual Classroom. Behind me is the 2021 Lexus LC convertible. We just got it and somebody already bought it. Very exciting. If you visited us at the Lexus Virtual Classroom before, you know that we have short little tech tip videos, but we also do deep dive, in-depth tutorials. And that's what we're gonna do for you today. The LC Convertible has a lot in common with its inspiration vehicle, the LC. So you'll see some clips that are filmed on the convertible, but you'll also see some clips from the LC where it's appropriate to this particular vehicle. I do wanna make sure to point out everything that's specific to the convertible functionality so that you can learn it as you're exploring your new LC convertible. Let's talk about how easy it is to put the top up and down on the new Lexus LC convertible. The LC convertible top opens in about 15 seconds and closes in about 16 seconds. It's preferred that the vehicle is stopped for top operation. However, it can be operated up to 31 miles per hour. The controls for operating the power convertible top are located just under the palm rest for the remote touchpad. Slide your hand back and you can either push down and slide open your armrest or leave your armrest in place. Just press slightly down on the release for the armrest and lift up on the panel lid. It's not necessary to release and slide your entire armrest back. All you have to do is push slightly down to gain access to the cover. Push and hold the button. You'll have an indicator on the dash letting you know that the top is in operation and it even has a progress bar so that it will light up in blue segments as the top continues its transition either open or closed. You'll hear the ding. You'll know that the process is complete. Also, you'll have a top over your head or tucked in the back. Once the top is closed, if you're ready to exit the vehicle, or if you would just prefer to have the windows closed, you can close them all simultaneously. Just lift up. When you put the convertible down, the windows will open automatically. Push and hold. Very smooth, very quiet, and very fast. All set. Close the cover for the top operation. Make sure to remember to continually hold the button in place for top operation. If you let go of the button too soon, you'll get an error message that the top operation is not complete. Just resume whatever action you were previously taking. Since the LC convertible has a power operated convertible top, it does not have a rear wing at the back of the vehicle. You'll also notice the absence of a rear wing button in the lower center console. To remove the windscreen, you wanna slide it to an angle so you can lift up one corner and then you can easily take it out. The windscreen has four attachment points, two at the front with a slide mechanism. If you slide the post to its retracted place, you'll see that it latches to release, push down, and then it will open and catch. All right, you might have already seen some great videos about installing the windscreen. They always have two people. I'm gonna show you how to do it with just one, we can do it. Take the screen out of the bag. You're gonna fold that bag up nice and neat, tuck it in the trunk. Step one, open the windscreen. Step two, 
carefully lift the windscreen over the side of the vehicle and then insert the back two anchor points. Step three, release one of the sliding attachment mechanisms. Now it's gonna hold itself up while we go over to the other side. Let's make sure to come around and release the other front anchor point so that the screen is secure while you're driving. And you did it by yourself. I will tell you that the windscreen's a little easier to manage if you have two people, but it's really not complicated. Because of this locking mechanism, you can slide and release one side and then go slide and release the other. You can use the easy access for the second row if you need a little bit more room to operate. Now the rear attachments don't have any kind of slide or anything that you need to release. They just latch into place. If we release the front two attachments, now you'll notice that this is loose. All I have to do is pull out and then I can place it in the back seat or I can go ahead and fold it up and put it in the trunk. So let me show you how to store your windscreen in the trunk. Snap together to close. Just make sure that you're applying pressure to the metal frame as opposed to the soft mesh. You wanna take great care of this for many years to come. In the trunk, you'll locate your windscreen protective pouch. Let me show you how to store the windscreen. Put the shade in the cover bag. You can either lay it down if you're inside or rest it on your foot like I do. Once you have the Velcro open, Go ahead and insert the bottom of the screen into the bag, slide it down, and attach your Velcro. You're all set. When you want to store your windscreen in the trunk, make sure you can read the word Lexus. The wider side of the windscreen is going to face toward you. Tuck one corner in and then the other and then you can slide it to the back or front, wherever you prefer. If you're storing it in your trunk, make sure that it lays flat and that you don't place any items on top of it that could potentially damage the mesh or the frame. Unlike the windscreen, the wind deflector is a fixed piece that moves with this section of the roof cover. Parking sensors are on the outside corners of the front bumper and front grille. You'll notice them on both sides. Parking sensors have a staggered placement on the rear bumper. They're lower on the outside corners that are recessed and then they're higher up on the midpoint which does stick out a bit farther near the center line of the vehicle. Keep in mind when parking, the LC convertible, it has a wide, low stance. You want to make sure that you have plenty of clearance before you come all the way up to a curb in a parking place. Otherwise, just stay back a bit and keep the undercarriage in great condition. You have an emergency towing anchor point on the front right bumper corner. You have two emergency towing anchor points at the rear of the vehicle. Like the LC, the LC convertible has run flat tires. Just look for the logo representing run flats right on the sidewall. You'll also have an indication that it's tubeless. It will also say run flat somewhere along the sidewall. The LC has wheel locks on each wheel. The wheel lock key is located with the tools in the trunk. Your wheel lock is the lug nut with the wave pattern. To open the trunk, simply push and hold the trunk button on your smart key. It's going to release the lock and then you can open it. Once you've popped the trunk with the button on the key fob or the button inside, you can go ahead and just lift it open. There's even a trunk button located on the inside of the right rear tail lamp. 
Just give a push and as long as you have your smart access key with you, you have access to your trunk. In the trunk, you should have the mounting bracket for your front license plate. Make sure to follow the regulations for your area if front plates are required. And you might even have a cargo net. To store your cargo mat, fold in the tab on the left-hand side. Then you can roll. And if you roll it pretty snug, you'll have more space. If you wanna keep this stored, use the tethers located at the back of your trunk. They slide out of a clip and then you can expand them and tighten them down. So go ahead and remove both from their clips and then you can open it up to put the cargo mat in. It's a tight fit, but it's awfully handy if you need to do it. Looking inside the trunk, you have D-ring anchor points, two at the front, two at the rear for cargo nets. Lift up on the front panel to locate tool storage, including your wheel lock key. Make sure to always nest that back inside so that it's there if you need it in the future. Keep in mind that this vehicle has run flat tires, so you will not have a spare tire. Under the second cover panel, you have a fuse box and your accessory battery. On the right hand side, your first aid kit. This is also a panel that can lift up. You can lift on the back corner. You probably heard a pop. That's the snap mechanism that holds this in place. And this is where your emergency towing eyelet is located and your small storage cubby. This is a great spot to store your cargo net if you're not going to use it. Just slide your cover back into place, snap it down, and your cargo net is secure. The left side panel is designed to stay in place, so don't bother trying to lift it up. The smart key on the LC has a lock, unlock, trunk release, and panic button. Now, if you're still using the alarm or panic button to locate your vehicle in a parking place, go ahead and change over to the Lexus app. The Lexus app has Lexus Inform Remote built right in. It even includes the ability to locate your vehicle in its last parking place. The Lexus Informed subscription service does rely on a cell signal to locate the vehicle, but once it's found it, just zoom in for more detail. So you can use the buttons on your key fob to open your LC, or just keep your key on your person and then use the smart access system built right into the door handles. To unlock, just push in slightly on the indentation and then the lever will open for you. To lock the LC, just push on the end of the door handle, it'll close flush and you'll see a green lock light letting you know that your vehicle is locked. The door handles are also linked to the buttons on the smart key. If you click unlock, it's going to power open the door handle for you. If you lock, it's going to close it flush. The seats on the LC convertible are beautifully crafted with a quilting detail and available with the Lexus emblem emblazoned on the back of the headrests. To access the second row, Go ahead and unhook the seat belt holder so that you can then reach in and lift on the release on the shoulder. You'll notice that it is moving and adjusting the seat for us. As long as that seat back stays in the tilt position, you'll have access to that power slide function for the back seat. Just bring the seat forward with the release so that you can allow it to open up so that you have access to those back seats. 
when you're ready to put the driver's seat or front passenger seat back into its normal spot, just push the seat back until it clicks and then it will track back on its own. The system works the same way on the passenger side. Undo the release for the seat belt holder and then locate the latch at the shoulder point of the seat. Lean it forward and let the seat move up automatically for you. Once you've accessed the back seat and you're ready to put your passenger seat in its normal position, just lean the seat back until it clicks into place. The LC convertible even has latch for car seats in the back seats. Your lower anchors for the system are right at the crease of the seat back and seat bottom cushions located in both back seats. Make sure to note that there are no top tethers for car seats on the LC convertible. Consult your car seat manufacturer's installation manual to make sure that it's properly installed and compatible for this type of vehicle. The LC is clearly designed predominantly as a two-seater, but it's not. It's a two plus two, but they do allow the front seats to come all the way back to the second row so that there's plenty of leg room for front seat passengers. However, that means if you do have back seat passengers, you need to adjust your seat accordingly. To keep your seat belts in easy reach, just unsnap the seat belt holder and slide the belt in flat. Then when you're in your seat, your seat belt is nice and easily within reach. One of the first things that you should do when you get a new vehicle is set up your driver position. So let's go ahead and have you adjust your seat. You can bring it forward, back. You can raise the hip point, lower the hip point, raise and lower the front of the cushion and tilt the seat back or forward. You also have lumbar support on the LC. You give the button a push in the direction that you would like more or less lumbar support. I'm going to push the button. You watch the seat back cushion. So you have a really nice support and with these side bolsters, the seat really does hug you very well. Our next step is to adjust the steering wheel position. Look on the left side for the toggle. This allows you to bring the steering wheel up, down, away, or toward you. Then you can adjust your side mirror position. You'll choose L for left, R for right, and use the touchpad to make your adjustments. Notice that you also have an auto and a power fold feature. If you choose to power fold your mirrors in, make sure to press the auto button to open them. Then your mirrors will fold in automatically when you lock your LC. Once you have your seat, steering wheel, and side mirror position adjusted, you want to save your driver position memory. Push the word set, let it go, and push your number. There are three possible driver position memory settings. Once you've saved your driver position memory, you can then recall it just by pushing your button. The side mirrors can also tilt in reverse, making it easier to back out of a parking place. If you have either left or right selected, it doesn't matter which button is lit, when you put your LC convertible in reverse, your mirrors will tilt down. That angle of tilt is customizable. Let's take a look at how that works. Right now, we have one of the mirrors selected. When I put the LC in reverse, 
the mirrors tilt. When I go back to drive, they return to their drive position. To customize the angle of tilt, select a mirror that you would like to adjust. I'm going to choose the left mirror for demonstration purposes. Put the LC in reverse and then change the mirror tilt down position. When you have it where you want it, return to park. To test the customization, go back to reverse. And you'll see that it's been memorized. If you don't want your mirrors to tilt and reverse, simply deselect. Make sure that there is not a light on L or R. With no mirror selected, the mirrors will not tilt and reverse. Lock your windows so that your passengers cannot operate the window. Lock the doors, unlock the doors, operate the driver's window or the passenger window. Let's start exploring the buttons on the left side of the dash. You can adjust the brightness for the lights on your gauges, pushing the up arrow to make it more bright and the down arrow to make it more dim. Your odometer trip meter button toggles you through trip A, trip B, a blank screen, and back to your odometer. If you're on trip A or trip B, you can push and hold to zero it out. Coming down farther on the left side, you'll see a button to power open your trunk. Your power trunk has a cancel feature located in the glove box. To lock that in place, you'll need to remove the metal key from your key fob. Here's how to do it. To remove the metal key, just look on the side of your key fob that says push. You're going to push on the dot at the end. So if you have a key glove covering your key, just feel for the lever at the end and push. If you've removed the key glove, you'll actually see it release. Then you can pull out your metal key and you'll use this to lock and unlock your glove compartment. Let's take a look inside the glove compartment so that I can show you the button to push to cancel your power trunk opener. The lock for your glove compartment is located on the lower left side. If it's locked, the key will go in flat. If it's open, the key will be perpendicular. Now our glove compartment is unlocked. This is not the button to open the glove compartment. If you push this, nothing will happen. The button to open your glove compartment is up at the top and it's a silver button. Just give a push and now you can see the trunk opener cancel button. If we push this button so that it sticks out, it's protruding, then close your glove box, put in the metal key, turn it to the right, turn it clockwise, turn it flat, pull it out. Now your glove compartment is locked and the power feature for your trunk has been deactivated. You cannot open it from the button on the key fob or the button inside the vehicle. That means that if you're valet parking your car and you want to secure items in your trunk, give this to the valet and you take the metal key with you. When you're ready to put everything back to normal, just unlock your glove compartment, push the button at the top to open the door, push the trunk opener cancel button in, close your glove compartment. Now you can restore your metal key to the key fob and everything will work like normal. If you have a blank button, it just means that that's a feature that is not on the package on your vehicle. Your HUD button heads up display. If you give that a push, it will turn the heads up display on 
and we have additional settings that we can use to customize what's in your heads up display. I'll show you that in a moment. Your fuel door release button is nice and easy to reach. Just give a push and it'll pop open for you. Moving down from the left hand side, way down here is your hood release. Your headlights are controlled on the left side of the steering wheel. You want to use the selector to select auto. If you dial down to the bottom where it says DRL off, that means daytime running lights off, actually everything is off. Come back up to auto so that your lights will come on automatically for you or choose daytime running lights only or low beams and daytime running lights. Now you have another feature for automatic high beams. There's a button at the end, just give it a push. You'll see a light turn on here and you'll have a message appear on your dash telling you to activate your high beams by pushing the headlights into the high beam position. That means you're going to push your headlamp stock forward. Most people prefer to leave your lights in auto because if you have selected to manually turn them on, you have to turn them back to auto or manually turn them off anyway. Make life easy, leave them in auto. Windshield wiper controls are on the right side of the steering wheel. You'll click the stock up or down to control the function. If you bring it to the top, it will give a swipe for mist and then return automatically to the off position. But if you want full auto rain sensing wipers, you need to bring the stock down one click to auto. Once you're in auto, you can adjust the sensitivity for the automatic wipers on the dial. At the top, they're the most sensitive. At the bottom, they're the least sensitive. When they're at the bottom, it's going to take a lot more water to get them to activate. So that means it's going to have to rain more heavily. At the top, it will take less water. The more sensitive they are, the less amount of rain is needed for activating. If you want to take over for a steady low swipe, just bring it down another click to low. If you want high, bring it all the way down to the bottom. Swipe for mist, defaulting to the off position. Down one click for auto, and you can adjust the sensitivity for your automatic wipers. Down another click for low, and high at the very bottom. If you're not sure where you are, push it up to the top, let it drop, and come down one click. Pull it to you to spray the front windshield. Tucked down under on the right side is your emergency parking brake. Once it's activated, it will come on automatically when you put your LC into park. So you don't have to manually turn it off or on as long as it's been turned on once and you see the word park in red on the bottom right corner of your dash. If I shift out of park, the emergency parking brake will turn off. If I go back to park, I am not only in the park position, but my emergency parking brake has activated. If your emergency parking brake is not already in the automatic mode, go ahead and activate it. Push down and hold until you see a message telling you the electronic parking brake has been activated. To deactivate the automatic feature of your electronic parking brake, pull up and hold until you see the deactivation message. To activate, push down and hold. Once it's activated, it will come on automatically when you put your LC into park. Let's talk about shifting gears. Just follow the pattern and notice that you're always going to shift to the left or neutral first. So to go to reverse, we would shift left and up. 
to go to drive, we would shift left and down. Let's take a look at how that works. Apply the brake and then shift left and up for reverse or left and down for drive. If you're going to drive in manual mode, once you're in drive, you can shift straight down again to activate manual mode. Then you can take advantage of the paddle shifters. The LC has racing inspired paddle shifters. Upshift on the right, downshift on the left. Make sure that you have shifted to manual mode to activate. Shift left and down and down again. So we've moved through neutral to drive and then manual. Now you're able to shift with the paddle shifters. When you're ready to go back to drive, shift left and down. To go back to park, push park. You can use your brake hold feature to hold your foot brake for you. This is handy if maybe you're stuck at a train. Once you've come to a complete stop and you know that the brake hold has engaged, you can remove your foot from the brake. Then tap on the accelerator to get going again. The brake hold feature is turned on, but it's not actively holding the brake. Once I come to a complete stop and I see the word hold lit in gold, then I can remove my foot from the brake. When you're ready to go, just gently apply the accelerator. Come to a complete stop and brake hold has engaged again. Moving up our center console. You'll see buttons to operate the home link feature located just under your rear view mirror. That will allow you to link garage door or gate operation. The mirror is also an auto dimming mirror. When this light is on, it means the feature is activated. That will allow your mirror to dim automatically at night when the sensor detects light from vehicles traveling behind you. It helps to prevent glare. Continuing up to the headliner of the vehicle, dome lights are touch operated. There are no other buttons to push. You also have a door mode for your dome lights. You should see a small green light on this button to know that the door mode is activated. This will allow your dome lights to turn on automatically when a door is opened and turn off when the door is closed. Your SOS button or safety connect feature is located just behind this door. Just give a push if you need emergency assistance. Safety Connect is part of the Lexus Inform Connected Technologies subscription package that comes for a trial period with your new LC convertible. Let's take a look at all of the buttons on the steering wheel and the features they control. Starting on the left side, we have volume control for phone and audio, the voice command button, telephone button, notice that there's just one. You use the same button to answer a call or hang up a call. Your panel of arrows, the OK button, and the menu and go back button all operate your multi-information display located on your instrument panel. The LC has a sliding bezel inspired by our LFA supercar. Just press the menu button on the left side of your steering wheel to slide the bezel open and closed. Let's take a closer look. When you slide the bezel open, you have access to the full multi-information display. Notice that there's a menu bar that appears and disappears at the top of the screen. If you move left or right in the menu, you have lots of different options. That's why they call it the multi-information display. If we move to the right, we have a compass, to the right again for an audio screen, to the right again to monitor our lane keep assist feature. To the right again takes us to service related messages. And finally, 
to settings. We'll dive into settings in just a moment. Let's arrow to the right one more time to come back to our main information display. Notice that we have a lot of fuel economy information. In fact, there are two drive information screens with fuel economy information that can be customized. We'll look at that in a moment. Let's just keep arrowing down and you'll see an eco indicator. That's kind of like a indication of good job for driving in a fuel efficient way. So with this LC, I'm not sure that anybody is going to really be interested in looking at that eco indicator. It is way too much fun to drive. Arrow down again to monitor engine oil temperature, a G-force monitor, gear position, sway warning. The sway warning is part of your lane keep assist feature. If you have multiple corrections in a row from your lane keep assist feature, a sway warning is going to appear on your screen. It looks like a picture of a coffee cup and it will say, please take rest. The concern is that you could potentially be a fatigued driver and they want to make sure that you pull over and take a break. Arrowing down again for tire pressure. Coming down one more time and you have a blank screen in case that's your preference. Arrow down again and you're right back at the top of your information display. Now check this out. If I close the sliding bezel, what do you see right here? Your information from the information display. You can scroll up or down either way and you will see information in that information menu from the multi-information display. Knowing that gives you a quick access to a lot of information without having to open or slide the bezel. But there is some information that you can only access when the bezel is open because if you notice, we cannot go left or right and operate those other menus in our information display we are only able to see that main information screen. So let's slide that bezel and let's do a shortcut to our settings screen just by pushing the left arrow button. Our first item is lane keep assist. So our highlighter is already on LKA just by default, but if you needed to arrow up or down, just use your arrows. Now we're going to push OK to open that menu item. We can customize lane centering. When this feature's on, the system works a little bit harder to keep you in the center of the lane. As long as you know it's on and you're good about using your blinker, this can be a really nice additional safety feature. But if you feel like it's overcorrecting, you can come in and turn it off. Steering assist. When the lane keeping feature gives you an indication that you're starting to veer out of your lane without your blinker on, you're going to get a notification and with steering assist, you're going to get a little bit of a nudge in the right direction. You can customize the sensitivity from standard to high. You can turn that sway warning off or on and you can customize the sway sensitivity. So if you keep the sway sensitivity on, you can change from standard, low, or high as your customization. Arrow back up if you want to make any other changes. Otherwise, push that menu or go back button to go to the previous screen. Coming down to pre-collision system, push the OK button to open. You can turn it on or off. We highly recommend that you leave it turned on. And when you come down to sensitivity, you can just customize the sensitivity level, low, medium, or high. Push the go back button. Blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. These are two features to leave turned on. When you turn your blind spot monitor on, you're going to see an indication in your side mirror and hear that tone. 
that lets you know that the system is on and engaged. The blind spot monitor looks for vehicles in the blind spot on both sides of the LC. Rear cross traffic alert is designed to detect vehicles crossing at the rear of the LC when you're in reverse and backing up. When you turn the blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert systems on, you will also see lights on the right side of your dash, BSM and RCTA. Push go back, arrow down to parking assist. Push the OK button to turn it on. You'll see a green letter P light up on the right side, right above your blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert lights. Arrow down. This is where you can adjust the brightness and position for the heads up display. Push the OK button and to increase or decrease the brightness, just use the left or right arrows. To adjust the position, use the up or down arrows. You'll see the changes reflected in the heads up display looking through the front windshield. Push go back. Arrowing down, you can change your unit calculation from miles to kilometers. You can change your digital clock from a 12 hour to a 24 hour clock. Then you can come to vehicle settings for additional more detailed customization. Push the OK button and open BSM. So we've already turned blind spot monitor on and off. When it's on, you can customize the brightness. You can customize the sensitivity and the volume of the notification. Now keep in mind, the notification is about rear cross traffic alert. The blind spot monitor portion is a visual only notification. Pushing go back, coming down to heads up driving support. Push OK to open. And these are all of the items that you can customize or have appear in your heads up display. I recommend that you leave everything on drive your LC and experience those items. Then make changes. Unless you're already used to having a heads-up display and you already know what your preference is. Push go back and come to heads-up display rotation. Now this is really handy if you are somebody who keeps your wallet in your back pocket. When you are seated, you might not be aware that it does affect your hip position. So you wanna make sure that your heads up display looks straight on and level. Push the OK button to open. So it's not an extreme rotation. If you keep a close eye out, you'll see it moving. So pushing the right arrow to tilt clockwise, pushing the left arrow to tilt counterclockwise. So when you have it where you like it, just push the go back button. The heads up display is designed to be visible only to the driver. Arrowing down, tire pressure warning system set. This is something that a technician will do when they rotate or change out your tires. Coming down to scheduled maintenance, pushing OK. This is also where a technician would come in to reset the data after you have service. Push go back. Notice that we're at the end of our menu. Push the go down button and then you will loop right back to the top of vehicle settings so that you can find it easily when you come there again. Push go back to go to the previous screen. Arrow down to meter settings. Push OK. This is where you can change the language of the display. English, French, or Spanish. Push go back. Another opportunity to customize the units for calculation. 
turning on or off the eco indicator. Keep in mind, this is a different eco indicator than the eco monitor that we saw previously. This literally is this green little leaf that pops up that says eco while you're driving. Coming down, if you see drive info one and drive info two, those are the drive information screens that can be customized. Just push OK. Then choose the item that you would like to customize. So if you have current fuel economy and a bar type of display at the top, and then your second item that's by default is average fuel economy after reset, maybe you would prefer to know the fuel economy per tank, or maybe in an LC you're not overly concerned about fuel economy and you would like something else to be there. Push the OK button. These are all items that you can use in your drive information screens. So you could do fuel economy after refuel, that means on each tank of gas, You'll have your calculation, average speed after start or reset, that might be handy in this vehicle, elapsed time. This is an awesome item to have displayed, especially if you're taking long trips and you wanna make sure to stop periodically to get up and walk around. So let's say we wanna use elapsed time, push okay, and now our new item in the drive information screen is elapsed time after start. We can see what that looks like if we push the go back button and jump back to our meter settings. Push go back again, push the button a third time to slide and close the bezel. And now we have our new drive information screen right at the top of our multi-information display in the center of our dash. If you'd like to make more customizations, push that menu, go back button to open the bezel. Re-enter meter settings, push OK, and then come down. You could do more customizations for Drive Info 1 or Drive Info 2. Arrowing down to our pop-up display, when you receive an incoming call, you're going to see this display on your instrument panel. Just use the up or down arrow to answer or decline. Hello, this is Melissa. Hi, Melissa. It's Steven. Hi, Steven. Thanks for helping out today. <laughs> You're very welcome. So notice that we had an opportunity to arrow up or down to either put them on hold or end the call. These are items like we saw with our telephone call that can pop up on any screen while we're driving. Intersection guidance, if you have a destination programmed in. Our telephone, audio system information, volume information, and the adjust brightness screen that we saw before, arrowing down to be back at the top of the menu. Push the go back button. Ring position memory, on or off. Theme setting, push OK. You can choose from blue or gold. If you highlight gold and click, you'll notice the theme change. Push OK and select blue to go back. Arrowing down, rev indicator. If you turn the rev indicator on, come down to the customization for rev setting so that you can modify when you'll have a notification. Push the go back button, push go back again, arrow down to rev peak. You can turn this on or off, and then you can always go back to the factory default settings if you prefer. Arrow down to come back to the top of your menu. Push go back to exit meter settings. Arrow down to come back to the top of your settings menu. Now arrow to the right to return to whatever other menu screen you prefer. When you have it where you like it, you can close the bezel because your drive information screen will always be right in front of you. Moving to the right side of the steering wheel, audio command buttons are at the bottom. 
mode will toggle you through your different audio sources, switching you from AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, you name it. If you push and hold the mode button, it will pause or mute your audio. Push and hold again to resume. Your arrows on the steering wheel will move you through your radio presets. Your lane keep assist feature is turned on and off here. Notice that the icon looks like a vehicle leaving the lane. When you push the button to turn it on, you'll have a message letting you know that lane keep assist is turned on. And if you have steering assist activated, it will notify you as well. You also have the icon just here on your dash. When you start to veer out of a lane, it will change from white to a yellow-orange color as a warning indication. All of these buttons and this top button will operate your dynamic radar cruise control. To turn it on or off, simply click. Then when you've achieved the speed that you want to cruise, click set. You'll also modify your following distance by pushing this button to toggle you through different following distance parameters. When you push the following distance button, you'll see it move you through three different options, long range, mid range, and close range. This is like a buffer zone between you and the vehicle traveling in front of you. The LC will begin to slow you down based on the threshold that you have set. When it can maintain your following distance, it will also maintain your speed. If you have tapped on the brake or pushed cancel, you can always resume by pushing the button right at the top. If you would rather use traditional cruise control, not allowing for following distance with the radar, you can turn on traditional cruise just by pushing and holding the power button. You'll see the indication change from radar cruise to speed only. That means you are completely in charge of braking. Just push to turn it off to go back to Radar Cruise, push and release. It will tell you Radar Cruise active and it will show you a symbol with a vehicle representing the following distance and an arrow representing the speed being monitored. Moving up and onto the dash. Just in the driver's reach, you'll see another racing-inspired element. Your drive mode selector is on the right side of the steering wheel, and your traction control and snow mode control are on the left. Let's take a closer look at each item. The drive mode selector is controlled by twisting the dial. The drive mode selector the drive mode selector is controlled by twisting the dial down for eco, down again for comfort, push the button at the end of the dial for normal, push again for custom, twist up for Sport S, and up again for Sport S+. Plus. Notice that right now we're in normal mode. If we twist the dial down, we will be in comfort mode and we'll have an indication right on the dash. If we twist up for Sport S, not only does it change to Sport S as the label for the type of mode that we're in, but it has a dramatic change in the lighting theme. Twist up again for Sport S Plus and it's even more dramatic. Push in for normal, and we're back to our normal lighting mode and the normal mode indicator. When you change modes, you'll also see an indication right on the screen. Eco, Sport S, Sport S Plus. Normal will go back to the previous screen and will only be noted on your sliding bezel. When you push for custom, you have an opportunity to click right on the word settings and immediately customize this drive mode. For the powertrain, power, normal, or eco. For the chassis, sport, normal, or comfort. And for climate, 
normal, or eco. Push go back after you've made your selections. Keep in mind that all of these adjustments will be controlled by using your fingertip on the touchpad and pushing the go back button that's linked to our main screen. Let's take a look at the operation of the armrest. If you push this lever, you can slide back to reveal a cup holder and a storage cubby. If you use the latch on the left side to release, you can open the glove compartment. That's where you'll locate your two USB ports, auxiliary port, and 12 volt charger. When you're all set, just close the compartment and push the lever and it will glide forward. Moving up to operate your touchpad, you simply slide your finger across the surface. When you're on an item that you want to select, you can push down anywhere on the touchpad. The entire surface is clickable. You have map, menu, and go back hard button shortcut controls right at the top of the touchpad. You also have an additional menu button that will appear on some screens. You'll see this icon and the word setting. To be able to open additional settings, just push this button. Other important hard button shortcuts are for the audio system. They're right within reach. The radio button will open the radio screen on your main display. The media button will open the media screen or audio items that are not AM, FM, or satellite. For example, Bluetooth or a CD. Yes, we still have a CD player. Single disc and your eject button is just on the left hand side. All other controls will be soft buttons on your main screen. Power and volume. Simply push down to turn on or off the audio system. Your volume is controlled on the dial. Seek and track. Seek will move you through stations on the radio dial. Track will move you through Bluetooth or CD and it will change you from track to track. Just use the toggle. So notice that we're moving through the satellite radio dial through Seek. Just jumping to the next available signal as opposed to jumping through our radio presets, like you can with the arrows on the steering wheel. You can tune to radio stations by using either the tuner dial, like I'm doing now, or by using voice command. Check this out. The first time you launch the voice command system, you're going to be notified that you have some tutorials available. This is what happens. Push your voice Before command you button. Start, consider viewing the available video tutorials or voice training functionality. Select the do not tell me again option if you do not want this reminder again, or just push the talk button to continue. The tutorials and training will always be available from the voice settings menu. So take note if you do select Don't Tell Me Again, you also have to click OK for that message to completely clear. Let's do a voice command for tuning to a radio station. Tune to 99.1. 99.1 FM. As simple as that. So our keywords are tune to. Now that we have a station playing, we could save it as a preset. Use your touchpad, highlight presets, click down to open, then use your touchpad to choose the spot that you would like to save your station. Bring it up or down until you land where you want and then push and hold until it's saved. With this audio system, you can save stations in any order. We just saved an FM station. Let's try a satellite station. Tune to the bridge. The bridge. 
If you have a message about updating your subscription, click OK so that the signal can update. If you'd like to save the station, just repeat the same process. Highlight the spot and push and hold. Then you can continue with additional radio presets. Let's take a look at other items in our audio menu. Source at the top on the left gives you an opportunity to click on screen on any of the sources that you would like to access. From source, coming down, we have our presets that we saw before. We also have something called radio replay. This is kind of like DVR for radio. This allows you to cache up to 20 minutes of audio for HD stations and up to 60 minutes of audio for satellite stations. You can pause programming, rewind, fast forward, or jump to live. Also in the menu, you have a station list. This will allow you to view satellite channels, FM or AM station lists by genre. Coming to options, you can make additional customizations for your audio system. And then coming to sound, you can adjust your treble, mid-range, and bass. Keep in mind that this customization applies to the individual source that you're listening to at the time of the adjustment. So if you make a change for satellite radio, make sure to go to FM. If you listen to a different type of programming, you're going to wanna make a different type of customization. You can also adjust the fader balance and you can turn on and off the automatic sound levelizer. The sound levelizer is speed sensitive and it makes smooth, mild adjustments to the sound as you increase and decrease speed in your LC. Swiping your finger down takes you to the next page. Surround sound is here. So if you have a preference for surround sound on or off, make sure to check that setting. Push your go back button and then select the screen of your preference. Another important set of hard button shortcuts are climate control. You can set the fan to auto, turn everything off, adjust the driver's temperature or the passenger's temperature, click up to warm up and down to cool down. You can adjust fan speed, more fan, less fan, you can choose for recirculating air, automatic to let the vehicle choose for you using the smog sensor that's on the vehicle as well as your speed or outside air, completely up to you. Front defrost, rear and side mirror defrost. When you turn these on, you'll have a light indicating that the feature is on. You have additional climate controls as soft button controls on the main screen. Let's take a look. Press menu and then select climate. Now, if you click down on climate, you can open the main climate screen. But if you prefer, you can jump to shortcuts just by highlighting climate and then sliding up to select options, concierge, seat and steering, and front climate controls. If you would rather click to open the main screen, just click down on climate and you'll see all those same items. Front controls, seat and steering, concierge, and options. And remember that extra menu button that we discussed before? There it is, right there. So if I push that settings button, we have a lot of duplication a shortcut to climate concierge, auto for the fan, everything off, turn on or off your AC compressor, turn on or off the dual mode that allows for separate temperatures for the driver and passenger, and turn on or off eco, heat and cool. Pushing go back to clear. You can highlight a particular area and adjust things like temperature, fan speed, 
and airflow mode. Now, did you notice that there isn't a hard button shortcut for airflow mode? So the two ways to manually choose where the air is flowing is to open the climate main menu, click down on the airflow or air position icon, and then flick your finger up or down and scroll through the different airflow mode options. That made a lot of dinging sounds. So if you don't like that, you can customize that in settings in just a little while. When you have the airflow where you want it, push down to select. Another option, if you are not on the climate control screen, is to use the climate buttons on the right screen shortcut. Just click to scroll through your airflow mode and leave it where you want it. Coming back to our climate control, let's take a look at the all important seat and steering adjustments. If you have your LC in climate concierge mode, the LC will make these adjustments for you for fan and heat for the driver's seat, heated steering wheel, and heat and fan for the passenger seat. If you prefer to be in charge of these items, you'll need to come to the seat and steering screen. If you'd like to activate Climate Concierge, it's kind of like auto on steroids. Open it up and everything is in auto, including the seat and steering wheel climate. Once Climate Concierge has been turned on, in order to turn it off, you'll need to just take over control. Manually put the fan where you would like it. Return to the seat and steering screen options and then just take over. Highlight each item that's active and as soon as you start controlling it, it will turn off. You'll see all of those auto items deactivated. Just like auto for the fan speed, if you turn on Climate Concierge, you just have to take over control by manually adjusting each item until they're where you want them. When you click to turn it on, you cannot click to turn it back off. If your LC convertible is equipped with neck heaters, you'll have controls on your main climate screen. They are also linked to climate concierge and the open air feature. This means that your convertible knows whether the top is up or down, the speed that you're traveling, and ambient outdoor temperature. Of course, you've already selected the interior temperature, so your convertible is going to do everything it can to keep you comfortable no matter what time of year or season you're driving it in. For more great voice command tips for your Lexus LC convertible, especially the climate control settings, make sure to check out this video here. Coming down to options, and you'll see a lot of the same items. Climate concierge, eco heat and cool, dual, and AC compressor, we've seen previously. We're also able to see a number of those items on our right side shortcut screen. Two items that we haven't seen yet are the windshield wiper de-icer and a pollen filter. Push the map button. Since I opened the right side climate menu, let's take a look at how to go back to full screen. The bottom right icon will take you to full screen. Anything that's on the left hand side will push and take over to full screen mode. You have a small right side screen map, music, trip information, and climate, all available on the right screen side. The quickest way to make adjustments to the climate control system is to open up the right side shortcut menu. You can customize airflow mode and even turn dual off to sync to a single temperature. Then just click on the full screen icon if you'd like your left side screen to open to full. 
So let's come back to our main menu just by pushing the menu button. We have reviewed climate and audio. And here are the shortcuts on the audio menu. Now let's take a look at destination and navigation. We have some great destination shortcuts with search, go home, recent searches, favorites that have been saved, and contacts with addresses that are listed in a paired compatible Bluetooth phone. Push the map button. Right on the map, you have a shortcut to search. Just click right on the search pin. Search will allow you to enter addresses and point of interest icons, either by typing when the vehicle is stopped or by voice command by clicking on the microphone icon. However, you can just voice command from any screen at all, including your audio screen. Let's take a look at how that works. We're going to push and release the talk switch and wait for the beep and then give our command. Find Starbucks. Showing results for Starbucks. Select the one you want. Say next page for more items. Number one. To navigate to this point of interest, say go there. Go there. Starting guidance for a new route. Once the route is programmed into the system, you can either start to drive or press OK on the bottom right corner. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Once you're on your way, if you no longer need navigation assistance, you can click on the X to delete a destination by clicking on the X, simply click and then click confirm that you would like to delete the destination. Or better yet, you can voice command to either delete destination or cancel route. Let me show you the difference. Delete destination. Which destination do you want to remove? Number one. Remove destination number one from your route? Yes. Number one removed from route. So that's really handy if you have multiple destinations programmed in for your day. However, if you only have one location programmed in, there's a better way. So let's go ahead and launch our destination again and I'm going to show you a really cool shortcut. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Cancel route. Route canceled. That means any destination that you had programmed has now been canceled. Nice and easy. Notice at the top of destination search, you have a go home shortcut. That's another great voice command. Just push the talk button. After the beep, say go home. Make sure that when you program your home that you enter something close by, not your exact house, just for safety reasons. Another item that you can search for, again, by typing or by voice command, is an exact address. And you can do it very quickly and smoothly from any screen. Take a look. Get directions to 9200 Grogan's Mill Road, Spring, Texas. Here is the address I found. Would you like to go there? Go. Starting guidance. 
So I could have said yes, I could say go, and if you noticed, I could also mark the location if I'd like to save it in my address book. The LC Convertible has a three-year trial period for dynamic navigation. Navigation connected to the cloud for cloud-based overlays and the most up-to-date information that's available for your Lexus navigation system. Let's take a look at the three different map views that are available on the LC. If you highlight and click on the top left corner where you see your compass, you'll notice three different map views. This tilted view is for 3D mode. It's very beneficial if you're in downtown areas with large buildings, just to help navigate the area easier. North up will hold north at the top of the map and the circle in the triangle representing your vehicle will turn and move as you do, but the map will not. If you click again and shift to direction up, the direction that you're facing will always be at the top of the map and it will turn as you turn, much like a smartphone map would. This is the most popular view. If you'd like to see more or less of the map information, scroll down to click on plus or minus to zoom you in or zoom you out if you need more of an overview. Now, another great way to zoom in and out rather than trying to land and click on the plus and minus is just by pinching and pulling your thumb and forefinger apart on the touchpad. You can zoom out by pulling your fingers together and you can zoom in by pulling them apart. Most people prefer to be right around 300 to 700 feet. That is the equivalent of sending a camera roughly 300 to 700 feet above your car. And that's the perspective that you would have on screen. Let's take a look at some additional map information. You can have point of interest icons show on the map, like for gas stations or banks, for example. Speed limit information. This is really important because it will use the navigation data to show speed limits where possible right on your map. Traffic information. This information shows right along your freeways and major highways green, yellow, and red for traffic flow. And that information is populated by your HD radio system. So if you do drive out of range, you won't have access to that information until you come back into a larger city center. Route trace allows the system to leave little dots all over the map so that you can trace a route into an area that might not be mapped thoroughly. Then you can follow your path out. If you have route trace turned on and you decide that you would like to clear your map, come to map information, highlight to deselect route trace. When it asks you if you want to save what's been recorded, select no to clear your screen and yes if you want to save the information on screen. We'll say no to clear. Coming back to map information, if you need to determine the map version that you're running, select map data for map data information. Pushing the go back button, go back again or map, and you're right back on your map screen. Coming back to our main menu, we've reviewed destination, audio, and climate. So let's move right along. When you have a phone paired to the vehicle, you have shortcuts for call history, favorites if you've saved them, contacts, your keypad, and text messaging if you've turned that feature on. Let's take a look at how to pair a phone to the LC. Let's pair a smartphone. Press menu. Use the touchpad to select Setup and Bluetooth. Select 
Add New Device. Now move to the smartphone settings. Select Settings and start looking for the car's device name, Lexus LC. Click Lexus LC and then Pair. Make sure to allow for your favorites, contacts to transfer. When you see the message about texting, come back to your phone, back into settings, and where you see the connection for the car, choose information, turn show notifications on, and then your pairing will be complete. If you'd like to place a phone call with Bluetooth, you're going to push and release the talk button. And then your command for a phone call would be call and give the person's name as you have them listed in your contact list that's in the system. There are a lot of exciting changes happening to the Lexus app and the Lexus Inform App Suite 2.0. In fact, they have merged. You still have your Lexus App Suite 2.0 functionality, but you have the convenience of all apps being located in one spot. If you have the Lexus App Suite 2.0 on your phone, you can go ahead and delete that app, install only the Lexus app, and you'll be able to scroll through and make all of your selections right in one spot. Coming back to our main menu, we have projection. Projection is where you link for Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Come to Setup and select Projection Settings. And this will allow you to turn on or off Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, depending on which smartphone you're using, which menu, and clear out of that screen. Our next step, simply plug in your authentic Apple cord or data certified cord right into the USB under your armrest. Bring it along this cable path. When you close your armrest, you still have the ability to slide your cable back and forth so that you have as much slack as you need. You can place your phone in the small holder at the front of the armrest. Plug in for Apple CarPlay. The first time that you launch Apple CarPlay on your phone, you'll have a message to unlock so that you can give permission. When you're prompted about Apple CarPlay, click Allow. Then you can close your screen, come back to your main menu, and you'll see that projection has changed to say Apple CarPlay. Click down to open. Any app on your iPhone that's compatible with Apple CarPlay will appear on the screen. You can click on the bottom left corner to see your apps, scroll through your pages. You have Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, you name it. Your three most recently used apps will appear on the left side. For more information about Apple CarPlay, you can check out another video that we have linked in the description below. Apple CarPlay has its own version of voice command. When you use voice command in Apple CarPlay, you're also using Siri. This time we have a broader range of capabilities, including navigation. Get directions to Starbucks using Waze. One option I found is Starbucks on Rayford Road. Let me know if I should call one of them or get directions for you. If you're using an Android phone, make sure to select to turn on Android Auto. Make sure you have the Android Auto app loaded to your Android phone. If not, go ahead and download that in the Google Play Store and then follow the prompts and steps to set up Android Auto. 
To use Android Auto, you will need to plug in to the USB port under the center armrest and give permission for Android Auto to operate on your device while you're driving. Coming back to our main menu, let's go to Info, kind of the unsung hero of the menu. You have trip information, traffic incident information, and the most popular, weather. You can see the forecast for today. You have a three-day forecast where you can click on any one of the three days for more information. You have a six and 12 hour breakdown of weather in your area at the time of your search, previously checked locations, national and local locations, and a Doppler weather map. Pushing our go back button, go back again, and in our information menu below weather, we have a vehicle alert history. This would be service related messages and the e-owner's manual. This is your electronic owner's manual that has a lot of great details, including videos, a keyword search, and a visual search. You even have a table of contents. So if you've come in to do a search and you're exploring different areas of the vehicle, just keep clicking through to get additional information. Then when you're ready to return, you can push map or menu to exit out. You can also push top to return to the top of the menu for the e-owner's manual. Coming back to our main menu, let's look at our final item, which is setup. You'll notice the shortcut here is for display. If you're driving at night in a more remote area, you can click screen off if you would like to turn the screen completely off. You can also adjust the contrast and brightness for the general view and the backup camera view. Coming back to our main menu, and let's click on setup. You'll notice that because we have a phone plugged in for Apple CarPlay, we don't have access to Bluetooth or phone settings. That's because Apple CarPlay overrides Bluetooth. If we unplug our phone, you'll have full access to the settings menu. You'll notice that the setup menu defaults to the general selection first. You can make adjustments to time zone, allow for an auto mode for daylight saving time if you're in a state that participates in daylight saving, and you can turn on or off the auto adjust by GPS. If you choose to turn off auto adjust by GPS, it will allow you to customize the hours and minutes so that you could set your clock ahead if you need a little extra time on the road. Most people prefer to leave auto adjust on and auto adjust for daylight saving. You can either click on the arrows on the screen to move up or push the go back button to go to the previous screen. The language selection for the display, English, Spanish, and French. Coming down to display, this is where we saw the adjustment for the general view and camera view when we looked at the shortcut to this setting screen. Push and go back, and then flicking down to get to our next page of general settings. Projection settings, this is where we came to select Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for our connected phone setup. Go back. Theme setting, you can choose to change the theme for the color of your display, either gold or blue. The unit of measurement for Celsius or Fahrenheit will change the readout for the weather information, but it will not change the general temperature selection setting 
That is determined at the factory depending on the country that your vehicle was built for. Units of measurement, you can make changes whether you operate off of kilometers or miles per hour in your area. Auto screen change allows the system to default back to the map or a previous menu screen if you have changed your view and are no longer taking action on that screen. For example, I'm going to turn auto screen change on. I'm going to push my map button. And let's say I changed over to my audio screen and I don't take any action. I just wanted to see what was going on on the audio screen. After just a little while, you'll notice it's going to default back to the map all by itself. So I'm not going to push any buttons. There you go. If you don't want that and you want to be in charge of what's on your screen, come back, menu, setup, scroll in your general settings to auto screen change and turn it off. Now, whatever is on the screen will stay on the screen until you change it. One time that it can default to the map is if you're on a Bluetooth phone call and you turn off the vehicle. The next time you turn the car on, it could be on the map. You can turn on and off the selection sound, which is the sound that's made when you click on something, pointer sound, and error sound. You can also adjust the pointer sound volume. Flicking down to our next page, feedback force is the sensation that you feel when the touchpad responds to something that's clickable. You can customize that intensity or choose to turn it off altogether. Coming down to cursor speed, this is how fast or slow the cursor responds to your fingertip on the touchpad. Multi-touch command, the double tap, that can be turned on or off. You can change your keyboard layout, delete keyboard history, choose to turn off the memorizing feature that learns as you continue to use the keyboard. You can delete your search history. Deleting personal data will Clear the system of customizations, things like phones that have been paired, radio presets, navigation information. This is a great thing to clear. If you're getting an L-certified vehicle, a vehicle that's new to you, this will reset everything for you. If there are software updates to be done on the vehicle, typically they're done at the dealership. Same thing for GraceNote database information, software information. The software information is where you can just look at some details about the software that's on the vehicle, pressing go back. But again, software updates are typically done at your local Lexus dealer with a technician in service. Coming to Bluetooth, this is where we would view our registered devices, add a new device, remove a device, and take a look at the detailed settings if we wanted to customize things like preferred device settings. This is great if you have more than one phone connected to the vehicle. Turn preferred device settings on and then you can tell the system which phone you want it to default to when both phones are in the vehicle. Pushing go back and go back again. In your audio settings, a great setting to know about is to come to radio and customize the number of radio presets. If you don't want 36 total presets, just change it to whatever you prefer. Coming to phone, when you have a phone paired to the vehicle, you have additional customizations. Coming to voice, keep in mind this is the onboard voice system for the vehicle. 
You can adjust the volume. Just click and slide. Or click minus or plus to hear an example. In voice, this is where you can also do the train voice recognition and follow the voice recognition tutorials. If you come to vehicle settings, you can customize maintenance information like reminders. Now you are going to automatically get reminded about service as long as you have that feature turned on. You can set your dealer if it hasn't been set for you automatically, and then you'll be able to call your dealer through the system when you get a reminder. It's very handy. Coming to vehicle customization, this is where you can customize the door lock settings. If you want both doors to unlock on the LC when you touch the driver's door handle, just select all doors. You have additional vehicle customizations for climate, light settings, convenience services, and other vehicle settings. Lexus Park Assist, you can customize the volume of the alert and the sensitivity front and back. Push and go back. This is another place where you can set up your custom drive mode. Push and go back. Valet mode is like locking a safe at a hotel. You'll enter four numbers to lock and those same four numbers to unlock. What it's locking is access to your screen. Pushing go back, coming to our menu on the left hand side and scrolling down. Coming to navigation, this is where you can program home. Don't forget that when you want to save your home, you should save something close by and not your exact address. Come into Wi-Fi to turn on your Wi-Fi hotspot. You can also customize your password. And I highly recommend that you take a picture of the information about your wireless access point for your records. You do have a complimentary trial period for the Wi-Fi hotspot on the LC. Coming down to Inform, you can customize that data usage message. If you don't want to see it, you can click Never Display. You can also have it auto-detect for your iPhone, just like you saw in the demonstration earlier. Traffic information, additional features that you can customize, turning things on or off as you prefer. Data services, to pull information for traffic and weather, the system typically uses your HD signal. It can also boost the signal by using HD and the DCM. That is the strongest signal and that is what's recommended, especially if you want to have consistently updating weather information. It does take a stronger signal for the weather information to populate. Press go back and that's the end of our menu. Thanks so much for visiting us at the Lexus Virtual Classroom today. If you'd like to learn more about your Lexus, make sure to subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell, and follow our tech tip tutorials so that you can learn more about your Lexus. We'll see you next time.